Hi everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com and today I'm bringing you along for a day in my kitchen. So I'm going to be making some different things and I'm going to bring you along, show you what I'm making and also sharing a fun announcement with you guys. So the first thing that I'm doing in this afternoon slash evening in the kitchen is getting some of the early dinner prep started. So I'm making some acorn squash to go with the rest of dinner and since those take a little bit longer to cook, I'm gonna go ahead and get those into the oven now. So when I do this, I just do it really fast and easy. I just cut them in half. I don't bother to scoop the seeds out yet just because they're so much easier to scoop out later when the squash is soft after it's been cooked. So I just do it that way. So I just cut them in half, put them on my stainless steel baking pan, put a little water in the bottom of the pan after it's in the oven, and then put those in to bake for 45 minutes to an hour, depending on their size. I usually do a 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And then I will sometimes do a, a longer cook time for these if they're in the oven with something that's at a lower temperature, that works too. But for today, I'm just doing a regular one hour at 400 degrees. And then the next project that I'm tackling this afternoon is finishing up rendering some tallow. So in a previous video, a few videos back, if you watched that one where I talked about rendering lots and lots of tallow to try to clear up room in our freezer because we had more beef coming, and I just talked about that we had a bunch of tallow that I needed to get through. So I'm officially finishing that up today. I have the last one to go and strain. And before I do that, I'm just popping this other previous bowl of tallow out that's solidified. And for any of you who are new and don't know it already, I have another video on my channel that's one of my most popular videos about how to render and purify tallow. I actually have a couple of them. One of them's a really old video that I was one of the first that I did on my channel about just the easy dry rendering method in the crock pot, and then the other one is how to render and purify tallow. So I have both of those up if you want to see an in-depth step-by-step tutorial type video of my exact rendering process, but I just like doing the first step of the wet rendering. Since I'm planning on using this for cooking, I'm not doing extra purifying steps or anything because I don't mind some beefiness in there since we're using it for food. But with this one, I'm just dumping out the liquid, scraping off the sediment there. And then what I do for these pieces of tallow where I've wet rendered them is I rinse them with cold water after I'm done scraping and cleaning all of that sediment off. And then I will just leave it on the cutting board in the open air for several days. And that just helps any remaining water that was in any of the crevices or anything to evaporate. So we all know that oil and water don't mix, right? Tallow and water are not going to mix. But sometimes when it's been wet rendered, there can be little pockets of moisture here and there. So I just find that that really helps to let any of that evaporate so that the tallow is nice and dry with no water and then you don't have to worry about molding. And then what I'll do is I'll keep one of these cakes of tallow out just at room temperature in the open air. And then I can cut off pieces whenever I need some tallow for cooking or, or whatever. And then the rest of them I'm storing in the freezer and I just have a piece of parchment paper in between each tallow cake and I just have a big old stack of these tallow cakes in one of my freezers. So it's a really good feeling to be getting through all of that tallow. All the lard is rendered, all the beef fat is rendered and into tallow and so now I am just, it's really nice to have that out of the way because that was a big lengthy project. I like to do my beef rendering, beef fat rendering outdoors just because it has a pretty strong smell to it. And especially when I'm doing this much, this many batches back to back, I don't want my house smelling like beef tallow rendering for weeks on end. So <laughs> that's why I like doing it outside. We just do it in our carport area. We don't have an actual garage, but you do it this way and that just makes it nicer so that all the smell is outside. And so this is the step where I'm just straining the cracklings or the extra connective tissue, whatever was not fat, out of the liquid rendered tallow. So I just strain that through, 
We give these bits to our chickens and then I stick the bowl of liquid tallow into the refrigerator to solidify. It's also cold enough that it could be outside just on top of the freezer or something, but I like to keep it protected that way I know animals are not coming and messing with it or anything and I have the space in the refrigerator so I just stick it in there. Then once it's solidified then I will go do the step where I take it inside, pop it out, scrape off the sediment, rinse it, and then let it dry before storing it in the freezer. The other project that I'm tackling today in this afternoon and evening in the kitchen is starting some more bacon to cure. So I also have another video on my channel that's a full tutorial style video of my process for curing bacon. You can do it with only salt if you're avoiding sugar, which is great if you're on the GAPS diet. And then sometimes what we will do is use an unrefined, unprocessed natural sucanat, which is cane sugar with all of the vitamins and minerals still in it. And we'll mix some of that with the salt. But the process is really easy. I have two tubs here. You wanna make sure you're using food grade plastic. The top tub has some holes drilled in the bottom and the bottom tub does not. And so you just put a sprinkle of salt in the bottom of the tub and then you lay your pork belly fat side down in the tub. And I'm doing two layers of this. Both times I'll put fat side down and on the bottom layer of bacon, I'll sprinkle on some salt and sucanat. And then on the next layer of bacon, which I'll put in there on top of that bottom layer, I'll also sprinkle some more salt and sucanat. And then the process is to just put these in the refrigerator for five days. After five days, I will rinse the salt and sucanat off, wash the tubs out really well, and then repeat the process again with the salt and sucanat. This time, whatever bacon was on the top will go on the bottom, so you just reverse the order, keeping the fat side down. Otherwise, it's the same. Sprinkle of salt on the bottom of the tub, sprinkle of salt and sucanat on all the layers of the bacon, and then you let it sit for another five days, and you'll see liquid collects each time into the bottom tub as it drips out, as it cures. And once the curing time is done, you can eat it and enjoy it as is, or what we like to do is to smoke the bacon in our smoker with some applewood chips or, or something similar. And that just really adds a very nice flavor to it. So right now I'm just starting that salt curing process. Now that I've got the tallow and the bacon out of the way, and those other parts of dinner started, the squash. I'm gonna start making something else. We have a lot of eggs right now. Our chickens are laying very, very well, and it's, it's a lot of eggs. So <laughs> we ha have to come up with um, creative new ways to use them, like you saw in one of my other videos not too long ago, if you've been with me for a little bit. It was a fairly recent video where I talked about, we have so many eggs. Do you guys have ideas? Always love hearing your guys' suggestions too. So one of the things that we've been doing is making pudding, different kinds of pudding, and just using a ton of egg yolks. So like with this batch, it's basically a vanilla pudding, but since we use the unrefined sucanat, it ends up being a lot like a butterscotch pudding. And so we make a big batch of that, and then we put four dozen egg yolks in it. So it's a very, very rich. <laughs> I also add extra butter, so there's lots of great fat in there too and it's really tasty and just a nice way to use up those egg yolks. So it's a really basic recipe. It uses arrowroot to thicken it. And like I said, I'm using sucanat for the sweetener. And then we put in our raw milk, some salt, and a bunch of egg yolks. And then we just gently, gently, gently. So before I turn on any heat, I have all of the ingredients in there except for the egg yolks and the vanilla extract. And I just let that sit without heat and that lets the sucanat dissolve into the milk as well as the arrowroot powder. Just mixed it really well to make sure there are no lumps. And then I get to work separating all of those egg yolks while those ingredients are just sitting with no heat. And like I said, this is just a really basic pudding recipe. You can find them easily in cookbooks and online. And I just use arrowroot instead of something like cornstarch. And so then, yes, just getting started, separating all those egg yolks. So I did them in two batches. I did two dozen at a time in the pitcher.
And then once I have all those egg yolks separated, I go ahead and just give them a nice stir to kind of try to mix them, blend them somewhat, break them apart, get them smoother. And then I go ahead and add them to the pot of the other ingredients and just try to stir them in really well. And once all the egg yolks are in, since I, I did so many, I have another pitcher to go. Once I have all the egg yolks in, then I mix them in really well. And then I start gently heating this at medium to, I feel like our oven runs cool. So I usually, when recipes say medium, then I do medium high. And then just constantly stirring as much as I can. I know I had to walk away here and there to do something else, but I tried to not leave it for very long at all because I didn't want anything to get too warm and, and ruin that nice smooth consistency. But I just stir, stir, stir. And then I am multitasking a little bit, so I'm not leaving it for very long, but once in a while I'll grab something else and, but especially as it starts to get warmer, which takes a while, but as I can tell that it's getting hotter, then I'm gonna stir it more and more regularly and not leave it to sit at all. But while it's starting to heat, while it's not too hot yet, then I'm gonna go ahead and start the rest of dinner. So we're having these little lamb chops. They kind of remind me of little T-bone steaks that come from lamb. They're really delicious. So I just have some bacon grease in one of my bigger cast iron skillets, and I'm just putting those in there with some, some salt and some pepper and some thyme on them, as well as some garlic powder. I'm just cooking each side for a few minutes and then I'm going to finish those in the oven so that the inside can cook. And then at one point I did call one of my helpers over to come and stir the pudding since I could tell that it was starting to get hotter and needed to be kept moving, but I had to also get dinner going. So she's here happily stirring and helping me out with that. I love butterscotch, Mama. I love butterscotch. And what are you making for dinner? I love that, Mama. Mama, that's what I have my fever in a nice and deep cup. I always feel so happy and I have way good ideas. <laughs> And then you can see the pudding is getting actually hot at this point, so it's starting to steam. And it's always at this point that I can tell it's starting to thicken, so then I really make sure to keep stirring it as it's thickening up. And I'll just keep going until I can see that it's just starting to boil, like one bubble maybe rises up and pops. And as soon as that happens, I'll turn it down to low, and then I will stir 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 for about a minute and then I'll take it off the heat and then I'll add my vanilla extract and then I will add butter. So add a whole bunch of butter <laughs> and then it's basically done. So then I, I let the butter melt in there and just stir it now and then to incorporate that butter in as it melts. And then the rest of dinner at this point is pretty much done. So we'll have that pudding for dessert after dinner but the acorn squash are out of the oven, looking really, really good. Those lamb chops are finishing up in the oven. And so dinner is coming together nicely. So at this point, I wanted to share with you guys some fun news. I think that some of you may have suspected it a little bit from uh, what I've looked like in some of my more recent videos. And, but yes. Uh, baby number five is on the way and we are very excited. It's also part of the reason for one of my videos where I was talking about things being a bit of a struggle and lacking motivation and ideas for dinner and having a hard time getting to the laundry. It was 
this was why. Some of you may might have guessed that. And you were right, this is why. It was just that first trimester feeling so tired and different foods not sounding good. But at the time of this filming, I am 20 weeks and I'm feeling really good. I'm feeling amazing. My energy is back. Food sounds good for the most part and it's things are much better. So <laughs> you're gonna see uh, that reflected more in the videos since I'm I'm feeling way better. So anyway, we are very excited about that. My kids are so excited. They are just, they are so excited. And baby is due towards the end of April in coming, in the coming new year. So springtime baby. And I'll just kind of keep you updated here and there on things that you guys are interested in. I have some other videos where I gave more in-depth pregnancy updates during my last pregnancy where I talk about what supplements I take, kind of how I try to eat, and what I do about different things, just answering all your guys' questions that you had that were pregnancy related. So if you'd like to know those kind of specifics, then I recommend going and checking out those videos, those other pregnancy update videos, because I'm doing everything the same that I did that time. So can check those out and then yeah let me know if you have new questions too and then now I'm just back to kind of pulling those lamb chops out of the oven because they are ready and now it's time to serve dinner all right thank you so much for coming along on this afternoon and evening with us in the kitchen while I did some projects that I needed to get done in the kitchen as well as made dinner and I hope that you enjoyed seeing all these different things. Check out those videos that are more tutorial style videos if you'd like to see my whole bacon curing process or tallow rendering process or anything like that. Check out that description box for links to free ebooks and other goodies. I have meal plans and different things down there. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody else you think would find it interesting. And if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out new videos every week on nourishing recipes and natural living. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.